Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Melissa Abache. I work at Koch University in the International Admissions Office, and I'm very happy to be welcoming all of you to our webinar, which is going to be about our joint masters in applied public policy between Koch University and the University of Strathclyde. We are going to take a couple of seconds as all of you start to join the webinar. We know that we have a lot of regist registered participants for today, and some of you may come a bit later. Um, whilst we wait for everyone to join, I just want to go over some ground rules for today so that we're all on the same page, okay? So please know that your microphones are all automatically muted. I know that some of you are raising your hands. We won't be using that, fe that feature today, but if you're just trying to say hello, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, we are going to be answering all of your questions at the end of the presentation. So please wait until the end so that you can see all of the information that will be given about the university, the program, application requirements uh, to answer your, to have your questions answered. To ask the questions, you will see um, a Q&A or a chat box. We prefer if you please type your questions in there so that um, we have moderators uh, joining us from the Graduate School of Social Sciences today. And they will be checking those questions during you know during the presentation and at the end if your question is very specific or individual to your situation uh we prefer or they will let you know that you can email um the graduate school so that they can provide a specific answer to your question okay the webinar is currently being recorded and we are going to um to send via email the webinar recording within 24 hours. So we will upload it to our YouTube channel and you will receive an email with the link where you can see the video. Um, today's webinar is scheduled to last for one hour, including Q&A. If we see that we're running a little bit um, out of time, we will also let you know, but we should be able to keep it on, on schedule. So what we're gonna talk about today is, um, First, to give you an overview of Koch University, especially for those of you who are joining us from outside of Turkey and you may not be that familiar with our institution. Then we're gonna talk about the joint masters in applied public policy. So we will look at the format of the program, uh, what, are, what is the mission, why did we create this, this wonderful program at Koch University and with the University of Strathclyde. Uh, what are the key advantages for you as, an, as a student in the program? the curriculums, and, and we're very lucky that we have the faculty members who are teaching those courses um, at Coach University with us today, and I will introduce them shortly. Uh, we'll talk about our partner, the University of Strathclyde, if you're not familiar with them, but they're a very well-known university as well. And then we will talk about the application requirement, uh, deadlines, and tuition fees. For that, I'm going to invite our colleague from the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities to provide that information. And then we should have ample time to answer your questions, as I said before. So, as I said, we're very honored to have today um, the faculty members who are, you know, responsible for this program at Koch University. So it's Professor Jan Erbaker, who is a professor of political science um, and the director of our Center for Globalization, Peace and Democratic Governance, GLODEM, at Koch University. Professor Ali Char who is a professor of international relations here at Koch University and a system of relations. And I will, they will have time to also introduce themselves and the work that they do here at Koch University. So here, to give you an overview, um, this is a, a small glimpse of our campus, rather than telling you about how beautiful it is, because it is a very beautiful place to study in. I will invite you to also check our YouTube channel where you can see lots of uh, videos that showcase different parts of our campus. There's, there is an aerial tour that you can see there as well. We are, of course, located in Istanbul, Turkey. Istanbul is not the capital of Turkey, but it's the, the central hub for, you know, for everything, let's say. And you might have heard um, the city is always referred to as a bridge and the country as well as the bridge between East and West. In the case of this specific master program that we're talking about today, this is even more important because of the access that you will have to, to lots of different research and ideas and practitioners and organizations that operate, again, between those two spheres of, of influence, let's say, between Europe and Asia. So it is a very strategic location to have a master's in public policy. 
and I will let our professors talk more about that. But um, the university itself, we are located, as I said, in Istanbul on the European side. Istanbul is a very beautiful city with over 15 million people, lots of international students, very cosmopolitan. And we are located in the district of Sarier, which is in the northwest part of the city, in a very peaceful um, and safe location, let's say. However, we are well connected to the rest of the city by public transport. So you can reach the city center in about one hour. Koch University itself, it's a young research intensive university and small in the context of Turkish higher education. There's around 207, I think, universities in Turkey right now. Um, hundred and I think it's 130 are public. The rest are foundation, not for profit private universities. So Koch University is one of these foundation universities. We were set up in 1996, so we're now celebrating, sorry, we're now celebrating our 26th anniversary. And in that time, I think we have um, already started to fulfill our mission, which is to become a center of excellence that provides world-class education and creates new knowledge for the benefit of society. When I say small, what I refer to is that um, we have a, approximately 7,000 students. This is between undergraduate and graduate programs, um, which are taught by around 500, now it's more than 500 faculty members. And the quality of those faculty members is something that makes us so unique. And I will give you a glimpse of that when we talk about our international relations and political science department. At the graduate level, we have four graduate schools um, which are providing master and PhD programs. So we now are offering 32 master programs. And um, we pay a lot of importance to internationalization of our curriculum, of our partnerships, of our research, and of our student body. This is why, as you can see in this graph, we now have exchange programs in Europe and outside of Europe, in the US, Asia, Middle East, with over 300 partner universities that are also equally at the top of their fields or in their national context. So this gives a lot of opportunities for um, for students and a reflection of this is the fact that one of the top universities in the UK. Um, rankings, it's something that we know that plays a part, not the main part, but plays a part in the decision making process for many of you who are considering where to go for graduate school uh, this year or next year. So in that regards, uh, we can confidently say that, you know, Coach University, especially in the in social sciences, which includes international relations and political sciences has already um, been recognized as one of the top universities worldwide. So when you look at reputable ranking, um, uh, ranking systems such as Times Higher Education or QS, our, our ranking in these uh, disciplines uh, keeps improving. And it's reflection especially of the research quality that it's being undertaken at the university in terms of the volume of publications of our faculty members the impact and the citation impact of those publications and the application of that impact in different spheres here this is just to give you a kind of glimpse of the research centers and research forums which are mostly in the fields of social sciences that are available to you as a student to benefit from at Coach University. This means that you have access to their, to their work, their events, their invited speakers, the, um, and the activities that they're um, you know, uh, conducting at the university. Here we can see a list of the research forums. And again, once we take a kind of deeper look into our international relations and political science department, um, the quality of our faculty members is unmatched really uh, when you compare it to other universities in in the region and in turkey of course so our emerging strengths are in the areas of european integration international political economy security studies but there is a wide range of research areas that our faculty members are working on and i will show you in the next slide so as i said uh, because we know it's important for some students to know the ranking of the university in specific subjects. In that regard, we are doing pretty well and we're currently the highest ranked university in Turkey, specifically in social sciences. And when we look at where our faculty members in the department receive their PhDs 
from. Um, this is also very, very reassuring as a, as a student because you know that they have been um, in Australia. So this is a type of supervision that you would be receiving in terms of uh, you know, if you're going to do research or if you're in a professional program like this one that we're gonna be talking about, then the quality of teaching. Um, I'm just saying that I have some internet connection issues. If my voice gets cut off at some point, I do apologize. I can repeat this at the end if needed. Here's uh, for you to have a quick look at all of our international relations and political science faculty members. And you can see details about each of them in our Graduate School of Sciences website. We will put all the contact details at the end of the presentation so that you can have a look and you can see the video uh, after as well. And you can see uh, which uh, projects they're working on, their specific centers that they're affiliated with, recent publications. So all of this information is available to you online. As I was mentioning, international relations uh, and political science is a very wide area. So our faculty members are together or individually working. Slide, uh, but I hope it gives you a flavor of the, the diversity of, of uh, interests that we have. And that again, uh, depending on your specific interests were applied uh, to become a policy practitioner or professional that it can, you, you can get um, the information and the latest uh, research on those topics here at Koch University. The list continues. And again, you can see all of that information on our, on our website. So the program that we're going to be talking about today is part of a, of a wider offer of programs in uh, master's and PhD level that sits within the Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities. Today we have one of our colleagues, Ms. Tuche Zatana from the, the Graduate School, who will tell us more about how um, the application and admissions and registration process works for the master programs in this graduate school. But this is just to give you a glimpse that besides the applied public policy masters that we have with the University of Strathclyde, we offer also all of these other master and PhD programs, which are more towards a, a kind of research orientation for those um, applicants who want to continue in academia or who want to develop as researchers, then we have that offer. Um, but we have started to uh, also uh, uh, offer more professionally oriented master programs, for example, in clinical psychology, social and cultural psychology, and now applied public policy. You can see the website details there, the email address. They're also on Instagram and I really do encourage you to follow them if you're using Instagram because uh, it's a great way of getting a glimpse of, you know, the students, the alumni, the professors, events that are happening on campus, invited speakers, distinguished um, speaker seminar series that they organize every semester. Of course, um, here I have to make a, a quick parenthesis to talk about the situation that we're in worldwide as a university and that of course I think most of you are in the middle of because of coronavirus and this pandemic. So there are some things about the admission process that are going to be uncertain at this point, especially with regards to registration or enrollment as a student for those of you who wish to enroll in the program for fall 2020. As a university, we don't have um, definite answers right now, but please be assured that once we do in terms of, for example, how courses are going to be delivered in, 20, in fall 2020, um, anything related to travel to Turkey and visas and all of that, we will be able to provide an answer and that answer will be on our websites, both the graduate school, the main coach university website and also the international admissions website. So we know you may have questions about this, um, and we will try to answer, but for most of most of the answers will be that uh, we don't know yet. So please bear with us during this time because it is the same situation for most universities, uh, for example, in the United States, in Canada, in the UK, um, Europe. So this is the, the period that we're in. 
Okay, so with that, I, I conclude the kind of overview of our university and our graduate school. And I would like to invite Professor Janet Bakir from our um, Department of Political Science to now tell us more about the master's program. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Melissa. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is great pleasure to be with you and welcoming you. Uh, and I'm really excited. Uh, that uh, there's a possibility that we will uh, meet up uh, in the fall uh, semester. So we have, uh, as Melissa noted, joint uh, uh, masters in applied public policy uh, with the University of Strathclyde, and uh, Melissa will help me to move to the next uh, slide when I say next. And uh, so this is a one-year uh, master degree program. Uh, between uh, Koch and uh, Strathclyde University. And uh, when we move to the next PowerPoint, you will see, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, our key uh, uh, interest, key objective. Uh, well, when we, uh, we have a unique program compared to any other university in the world. Uh, we, we aim to raise and nurture futures global leaders who can identify complex problems at global, national, regional, sectoral or industrial levels and generate workable and innovative solutions. So this aim uh, uh, is reflected on our program and its innovative content. For example, if you look at the public policy programs worldwide, what you will, uh, you will uh, be surprised that at least two of the most significant courses are missing, which are policy design and implementation and policy analysis and evaluation. So at Koch University in fall semester, we offer those highly important uh, courses. Uh, uh, this will help our students uh, to identify complex problems uh, that require really uh, close attention and identify appropriate policies and tools to address those uh, problems. So uh, this is uh, one of the unique uh, part of our program. In addition to it is, you know, uh, a joint uh, award opportunity uh, from the most, uh, one of, uh, two of the most reputable uh, universities uh, in the UK and in Turkey. So we can move to the next uh, PowerPoint. So this is, in our uh, program, we pay uh, special attention uh, on uh, building our students' critical thinking, analytical skills, and how to organize their ideas and present those ideas in an effective and convincing way. Uh, we also pay attention to rigorous research, qualitative and quantitative, using qualitative and quantitative methods, preferably mixed methods, to you know, uh, identify major uh, issues, potential and effective solutions to those issues. Uh, uh, we, uh, specifically, you know, uh, we uh, pay attention to developing uh, key skills of our students, uh, including their analytic and critical thinking, research and practical skills, uh, data analysis, presentation, uh, report writing and presentation of these writings in a highly uh, you know, effective way. Uh, we can move to the uh, next, uh, please. Uh, uh, University of Strathclyde uh, uh, is one of the uh, top uh, universities in the UK 
I have been uh, visiting a professor uh, since 2008 at Strathclyde, uh, which is a unique, uh, wonderful, scholarly uh, environment. It is ranked number one in Scotland and in uh, top 10 uh, in the UK for research impact. And it is one of the largest uh, and most recognized uh, academic community uh, worldwide. And Strathclyde received a number of prestigious awards and it is recognized for its you know, internationally acclaimed uh, research in political science and public policy. And like uh, Koch, uh, Strathclyde has a uh, number of uh, centers. At Koch, we have a Center for Globalization, Peace, and Democratic Governance uh, that I uh, work as its director, and it is policy-oriented research center. Uh, and at Strathclyde, uh, there are uh, two notable UK-wide important centers, uh, uh, including European Policies Research Center and Center for Energy Policy. Uh, and these uh, the centers are well networked in international uh, academia and uh, international uh, research uh, centers. Uh, for some reason at the moment, I cannot uh, see my uh, presentation, but Inji Dursunda's uh, page, uh, I can't see the presentation. Uh, so Something. sorry about that. I think I'm going to re-share yes. the screen. All right. Thank Let's you very much. Go back to it. Some technical. Yes, that's all right. Problem here. Yeah. So yes, I think that's we were the in one. This slide. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we can move to the next one. Actually, we are done with this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I can get into details of our uh, program and some of those you know uh, courses that I mentioned, and I will also. Uh, invite uh, two of uh, my colleagues, faculty members, uh, Ali Charkoğlu and uh, Güneş Ertan, uh, to supply you with further, you know, information about uh, the courses that they going to uh, deliver uh, during the uh, uh, semester. So I teach, for example, policy design and implementation. So we are take uh, today's world highly uncertain world as an example. How states respond to limit the effects of corona uh, virus or COVID-19 pandemic? You see all around the world, states are involved in designing policy mixes and instrument mixes. For example, this is a health policy issue on the one hand, but also it is a macroeconomic policy issue on the other hand. So there are two major policy areas overlapping. And how do you design and implement effective policy mixes? And when you look at the, for example, instrument mixes, take macroeconomic uh, policy as an example. You got monetary policy, you got financial regulatory policy, and fiscal policy. So there are three policies which should be calibrated in an effective way in order to achieve the common objective of limiting the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. And there are numerous instruments, instruments used by uh, uh, uh, states corresponding to each of these divergent and diff seemingly different uh, policies. So how do you uh, uh, generate the most effective policy and instrument mixes? What makes a policy success or failure? Under what conditions instruments trigger causal me mechanisms operating in appropriate contexts to deliver 
desired outcomes. These are really complex, challenging issues, and uh, we are lucky to have you know, uh, resources and faculty to deal with these complex issues and share our knowledge and experience uh, with our uh, students. So without uh, further ado, I would like to uh, invite uh, Güneş Hoca, Güneş Ertan, uh, to uh, you know, refer uh, to his post analysis and evaluation uh, course. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Güneş and I, uh, like Janar said, I'm an assistant professor uh, at the Department of International Relations at uh, Koch University. And I will be all the analysis and uh, evaluation. Um, so you may know, assuming that you're interested in policy analysis, policy analysis is about problem solving. It's about uh, decision making. And uh, in this class, uh, I'll teach you how to uh, approach complex problems as a policy analyst with evidence-based techniques. Uh, so uh, we will cover all basic steps of policy analysis. Uh, we'll learn how to structure uh, policy problems. We'll develop, uh, learn about how to develop alternatives. Uh, how to uh, compare alternatives uh, with each other using uh, different uh, criteria. And also we'll spend a lot of time learning technical skills of program evaluation, both qualitative and quantitative approaches to evaluate programs and policies to see whether they are actually uh, realizing their stated goals, if not how they can be improved uh, and so on. Uh, so I think I'll just stop here uh, and uh, I'll be happy to your, uh, answer your questions uh, in the Q&A session. Yes, uh, I can invite uh, uh, Ali Çarkoğlu to uh, supply us with some uh, insight on his uh, course. Sure. Uh, hello everyone, this is Ali. Um, I teach uh, this cases in public policy uh, course um, where uh, my main objective is to use real world examples uh, with uh, data, uh, relevant data of different types uh, and uh, ask a simple question. What would you do uh, if you were to be in the shoes uh, of the policymakers? Uh, having to deal with these problems. Then you have to uh, formulate your answers, um, evaluate alternatives, and engage in a debate uh, with colleagues uh, in the room uh, and defend your policy positions uh, against other proposals um, uh, and convince everyone that your uh, perspective is the right perspective to adopt in order to resolve these uh, questions. Um, I planned uh, before COVID to cover uh, policy challenges in uh, especially the, the gender discrimination uh, area, in uh, media policy area, and in environmental uh, policy areas. Um, together with, uh, you know, interactions in education policy. Um, all of these areas, I did some work in the past, so I have some knowledge on uh, the real world cases. But uh, now that we have the COVID-19 uh, affecting us all, most likely we'll have to deal with uh, real world uh, examples uh, of policy uh, decisions um, in cities like Istanbul or in countries like uh, Germany uh, and Switzerland. So um, you'll see that sometimes data is scarcer in some places than in, in others, but as policymakers, you can't complain about not having the data. Uh, once you are in the, in a position to uh, the deal with the problems, you'll have to deal with the problems with the data at hand. So um, this will be a 
primarily one-to-one -one, uh, group discussion um, based uh, learning. Um, I won't be lecturing much, uh, but uh, I will be guiding the discussions. Uh, you'll have to write your reports uh, and defend them uh, in the group sessions. Thank you. That's about it. Thank you, Ali. And indeed, you know, this is a, a typical uh, master's level public policy uh, course organization. It's highly interactive. Our, all of our courses, uh, so we benefit from student-based learning. We will invite a number of uh, policy professionals, practitioners, workers to share their experiences with you. Uh, all of us, you know, three of us and plus people at Stratclyde are at the cutting edge of uh, public policy uh, research. And uh, uh, so, you know, uh, we will share those uh, most recent conceptual, theoretical and highly uh, practitioner related uh, insights with our uh, students. And indeed, uh, COVID-19 affected us, uh, but sometimes uh, in, in, and in a positive way in terms of research. Uh, for example, currently I'm involved in you know, uh, cross-national uh, research uh, project on uh, how states uh, respond to the COVID-19 uh, challenges. Uh, so uh, it's a uncertain time and uh, we are trying to do our best to understand and make things uh, much more uh, clear. And thank you uh, to Ganesh and Ali for sharing their uh, insights. And uh, we covered quite a number of issues in regard to teaching and uh, learning uh, over the last few minutes. Uh, as you can see, small group works, structured debates, uh, presentations and background lectures are all uh, uh, included uh, and we will have uh, various assessment methods uh, but basically we incorporate uh, active student involvement in our uh, seminars uh, including uh, presentations, group projects uh, uh, and uh, uh, individual projects as well. Uh, so, uh, we can move to the next uh, PowerPoint. Uh, thank you. And these are some of the, you know, uh, examples of uh, placements uh, in the UK from uh, Strathclyde University. And you can see quite a number of you know, prestigious uh, places uh, uh, are available for uh, the graduates of uh, Strathclyde's uh, Master of Social Sciences in Public Policy and uh, students uh, having this uh, joint award will get the best of both worlds. Uh, Koch, Istanbul, Turkey and Strathclyde, Glasgow, uh, and UK. Uh, so uh, this, uh, you will have plenty of intercultural experience uh, and uh, you will be exposed to resources, capabilities, and uh, uh, expertise of uh, these two universities uh, uh, and which are basically you know, interdisciplinary and comparative. And this interdisciplinary and comparative aspects uh, are reflected on our uh, public policy program and you will see the diversity of uh, reading material from different disciplines as well as uh, huge uh, emphasis on comparisons. So country experiences, uh, sectoral or organizational level experiences we will discuss this kind of issues in uh, our program throughout the uh, semester. Uh, we can move to the next one, please. And uh, here I would like to uh, pass uh, the, the presentation on to uh, Tucha Hanım, 
and thank you for your uh, attention and looking forward to having your uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you, Janar Bey. Uh, hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Tuche Shatana. I'm the academic and administrative coordinator of Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities. And on behalf of the Graduate School, I would like to thank you all for joining us today and also thank our uh, global recruitment team and our professors for the detailed and very insightful overview of the program. So I will be talking a little bit about the application requirements. Um, as you can see here, we have an early application deadline, which is shortly coming on the 28th of May. And then uh, soon after, we have another late deadline uh, for those who cannot uh, get their uh, documents together uh, we have a deadline in 15th of June. Uh, the system is open for applications. All documents are uploaded online, uh, so you don't have to send us anything. And at this time, we're, uh, we're trying to accept all uh, transcripts. They don't have to be official, authenticated by your universities. Some of you may not be able to reach your universities. So uh, digital copies and uh, whatever you can get from your university at this time will be accepted in the early phase of the application. Um, so the requirements are, as I said, the transcripts from your previous studies. Uh, we do require a 2.5 or equivalent GPA. Uh, if you need a conversion, if you need assistance with the GPA conversion, you can email us and we will be more than happy to assist you with the conversion. Some countries do, do use different scales. We do, uh, this is an English program, it's the English taught program, so we do require an English proficiency from all non-native speakers, non-native English speakers. And they can be, uh, they can bring us IELTS scores or TOEFL scores or for Turkish uh, candidates, we can have YÖKTİL, YDS or EYDS. Um, your CVs, a, a statement of purpose uh, telling us why you're applying to this program and what kind of uh, benefits you would like to get from this program. And two letters of reference, preferably from your academic or your uh, professional uh, uh, referees. Um, if you have any problems, problems with the um, application. If you are experiencing any uh, technical problem, you can always email us. We would be more than happy to assist you with your application. The applications are evaluated by our faculty members, both from Coach University and from University of Startclyde. It's a joint decision. And um, the process is handled jointly for, from both sides. Um, can I have the next slide, Melissa? So uh, tuition fees are, ex uh, are uh, displayed here. Uh, this is the current tuition for this year, this upcoming academic year. It's an approximate conversion to US dollars. Uh, it may change according to your country's currency. And if you need help and assistance with conversions, we would also be more than happy to help you and assist you with that. Uh, the uh, this information reflects the half of annual tuition of Coach University, and as well as the half of the annual tuition of University of Starkly. These informations are also available on our webpage and also on the webpage of University of Starkly. According to our joint agreement, we have uh, both agreed to offer a 15% discount to all accepted admitted students to the program. But there are no other additional scholarships uh, on this program. This is a professional degree that we both offer and um, the only discount is the 15% 15 15 discount that we have mutually agreed to offer. Uh, however, some countries, some corporations may uh, also offer uh, scholarships uh, for these professional degrees. So we can ask you to check your own country's rules and regulations, or if you're working in a firm, some companies do tend to uh, fund the students, their students, and such programs. Um, can I have the next slide? So um, if you have any further questions, you can always contact us through these uh, information that I provided on the slide. And um, 
I know some of you have been asking quite um, specific questions about your own application, about your own scores, your language scores. So those uh, we would be more than happy to answer over email that you can send us. And maybe I can now move forward with some of the questions that we've been uh, kind of getting from you during this course of the webinar. Um, one of them I would like to ask our professors to give a little bit more detailed information is uh, the academic background of the students. In, in evaluating the applications, are we particularly looking for a, an, a certain academic background or a certain discipline for students to apply from? Uh, there, you can help me answer mm -hmm. this. Uh, we, uh, we, we will be, uh, we will be, you know, uh, able to look at those applications and evaluate them uh, to see their relevance uh, and then make decision accordingly. So uh, we won't be, you know, uh, limiting applications at the outset based on you know, where uh, those uh, students uh, graduated, uh, assuming that, you know, they're not graduated from highly irrelevant uh, areas, but we, we are quite uh, open and flexible to see the individual, unique individual uh, cases. And how about the statement of purpose? When they're writing a statement of purpose, do you have any tips and advices that you can give of them? Of course, of course. Uh, the statement of purpose is about what you are planning to do, how you are planning to do, and why you are planning to do, uh, and where. Uh, so, uh, in the uh, statement of purpose, that would be really useful uh, to focus on uh, your research interests and your professional interests, what, where you are planning to, you know, uh, apply the knowledge, what type of skills you have, and which skills that you would like to improve, uh, and how this program might contribute to uh, uh, your uh, skills, knowledge, uh, uh, and like. Uh, so, uh, generally, in, when we look at statement of purpose, people pay attention too much on uh, their past, which is important, which is relevant, but actually you should also, you know, uh, allocate enough uh, time and thinking on uh, what are you planning to do and what are the specific issues uh, that you are interested in and what you can bring into to the program and what you can take uh, what you, you are expecting from our uh, program and why. So this kind of uh, areas, uh, uh, questions uh, are important in general for uh, evaluating uh, statement of uh, purpose. And uh, if, you, if there's another further comment, uh, uh, please Ali and uh, Yunesh, feel free to uh, jump in. I want to comment on the background uh, of applicants. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, policy analysis, contemporary policy analysis is very interdisciplinary. Uh, of course, we encourage people from all kinds of backgrounds as long as they show uh, an understanding of, uh, some understanding of policy analysis and uh, tell us what they want to do with it uh, through their uh, degree. Uh, in their statements of purpose. So uh, please do not be discouraged, uh, for example, if you're in natural sciences, uh, you can still benefit from um, a public policy program and we won't be discriminating based on your uh, backgrounds. Exactly, you know, engineers, scientists work as policy analysts in relevant, highly technical, esoteric uh, issue areas, certainly. Okay. Thank you for your detailed answers. Um, so how can teaching procedures proceed with COVID-19? Currently, we're scheduled to uh, be here on campus uh, for the fall semester. 
but uh, of course, uh, under the current uncertainties, these can change uh, uh, as it has as we're uncertain how the things are going to be looking in the next months ahead, and uh, the, those changes will be communicated with the students who are admitted to the programs. But for now, we're expecting to s the students to be here uh, all for all of our programs, and we will be helping and assisting the students with the relevant uh, procedures for. Uh, visas and all uh, registration and all the other details. And uh, same applies for the start card for spring 21, 20, uh, 2021. Uh, but if these, if the circumstances change, then we would also be uh, getting in touch and letting you know about alternate options. Uh, we have some questions about the language requirements. Uh, we do have to have those. We do have to see your level of English. You may not have an, an exam uh, or you may not be able to take those exams at this time. There will be an option of a conditional acceptance to the program where students can send us their results when they're able to take the exams. So there will be flexibility um, for that. And then as for scholarships, uh, as I will, as I have mentioned in the earlier slide, there are no additional scholarships for the students aside from the 15%. Can I just um, add something here? Very good. Yeah. Hello? Yes. I think uh, Melissa is having a connection problem right now. Um, so I think that covers the most of your questions. So uh, if you have any additional, please feel free to type them in or you can ask us your questions through email. We would be more than happy to answer them. Uh, as Melissa said earlier, these sessions, this webinar is recorded. You can watch it again and contact us uh, if you have any other questions in the future. Uh, thank you. I would like to thank all our faculty members who joined today and uh, thank you all for listening to us. Melissa, are you back or? Yes, I'm back. I do oh, you're back. Okay. Yes, yes okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. I was just, uh, I, I wanted okay, to sure. I think you were having a connection problem, but please be, feel free to um, add your notes. That's okay. Um, I, I was going to share my screen, which just had our contact details at the end, and I will do that. But I just wanted to mention, um, just to add, because we know that some of you are worried about how teaching will be delivered. Um, one thing that has been quite positive is that not only Koch University, but the, the majority of Turkish universities were able to very quickly find teaching formats. And I think my internet connection is unstable again. So um, I think this gives reassurance to not only Turkish, but also international students that if the, if the decision by the university is to continue through online delivery of courses for the fall semester, we have all the infrastructure needed to do that properly. Um, and that's, that's something that has been quite, um, you know the feedback that we've had from our students is that it's working quite well so far on the other hand the turkish government has also been um, in communication with universities in their intent to make it as uh, seamlessly and smoothly as possible for international students to join and uh, their universities under programs this fall in terms of easing uh, visa application and processing uh, procedures and also in terms of of course with Turkish Airlines uh, you know trying to open within you know the, the cautions that you have to have uh, in terms of public health and safety uh, more routes and more flights into Turkey by the fall semester so I think both from the university perspective and from the Turkish government perspective there is a clear intent on again making it as as easy as possible for our students to join programs this fall semester. That's all I wanted to add in that. And I'm going to share my screen again very briefly so we can see the last slide 
here. Okay, all right. Do we have any other questions? I'm just checking. Thank you. Thank, thank. I think you're cutting out, Miss. Yes. Tell, tell all of so I think um, if we don't have any other questions for today, I would like now to thank all of our panelists today: Professor Janet Baker, Professor yeah. uh, Gunesh Ertan, Professor Ali Charkolu, uh, from our graduate school of social sciences for providing this introduction and overview of the program <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> yes thank you thank you melissa thank you, thank thank you, you melissa for this um, uh, i'm going to details and you will receive the video recording by tomorrow where you can see all the graduate school of sciences and social sciences and humanities website thank so you i'm going to say bye for now we all say goodbye bye-bye Bye-bye.